Saturday night, hold on tight and welcome. The name of this show is the Drive-In Asylum Double Feature. I'm one of your hosts, Bill Van Rin, and the other is Mr. Sam Panico from BNS About Movies. Hello. Hi, everybody. You ready for some nonsense? <laughs> We're 
always ready for some non tent baby. We invented it. Yeah. Welcome to the show. I've never seen mirrors, and I don't think many people have. I so dare afraid. you to say you've seen mirrors, all you folks yeah. in the chat. Let us know in the chat if you've seen it. But uh, yeah, Kitty Wynn, people are like, you know, she had something, The Exorcist, and we sat on this for three or four years, and now The Heretic came out. Let's get out mirrors. And uh, that I maybe that's what they said. Uh, who can say? Yeah, this so, movie uh, was made in 1974, but it didn't actually come out until 1978. And that was only allegedly because I'll tell you, spoiler alert, I couldn't find any ads for the ad gallery for this. I can't find any evidence that this played theatrically anywhere, period. Yeah, wow. So, the director, Noel Black, made one of my favorite movies, Pretty Poison, which is another movie that didn't really play a lot of theaters. Um, Catch me, I'm falling. Yep, up, 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 up uh <laughs> sorry um but uh and he uh, made a lot of tv movies uh and i uh, did a lot of tv work as well some episodes of cole jack some hardy boys nancy drew some mulligan stew some the world beyond the tv movie uh he did that uh the same year as mirrors and uh he just kept working he and he did private school with sylvia Cristel and deadly intentions another TV movie. So he saw it. He did a few episodes of the eighties twilight zone as well. So, uh, I'm excited to see, uh, what he hath wrought in this movie, as they say, um, <laughs> this voodoo kitty win joint. You know, I did kind of jump around in this and this is going to be my first chronological walkthrough, but oh, nice. there, there was a little trailer at the beginning of this. I had to make that myself because yeah. no such thing exists. Because as I said, I don't think this ever got a theatrical release. And if it did, I would love to be schooled in this because I searched long and hard. It's really hard to find ads for certain movies that have a generic title, like yeah. Mirrors. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's better if it's like Sasquatch or something. And then, you know, you're like, OK, yeah. I know where to look for that. But Mirrors, there's like a thousand instances of that in any issue of any newspaper. So. Uh, it's good not luck mirror mirror that. with rainbow harvest or mirror mirror two raven dance or mirror mirror three or four i see that uh david brought up mirror horror it is a genre uh yeah the four mirror mirror movies are definitely in it um and there's some other mirror based horror movies i guess the end of prince of darkness qualifies it right with the i can i consider this um the first in a trilogy sam oh there was, really there was mirrors yes then Shortly afterwards, there was Windows. Ah. And then the third movie, of course, was Curtains. Oh, and they closed it up with that. I like what they're doing. That's non-tent for you. This is That's hardcore cool. non-tent. Yeah, this is why this is what we bring to the table. Oculus too, Chris. Good good call. Uh I'm gonna have to make a letterbox list. Uh yeah. and bo boogeyman, boogeyman too. Man. I yeah. Boogeyman, Thanks, yeah. Thomas. Yeah, that's a good one. Someone, uh, Bess says that women sounds like a woman's picture. Uh, no men are allowed to watch it. So. Mirrors. Oh, yeah. It's um, it's definitely, well, you just couldn't go see it alone if you yeah. were a man. But since, you know, we're, we're in mixed company tonight, I think all the ladies in the chat will say it's okay for us to watch Mirrors, right? I, I hope, hope so. so. Yeah, I hope so. Well, yeah, Candyman's a mirror movie, too. Wow. The mirror genre is much bigger than we've been led to believe. Yeah, seriously. Alice in fucking Wonderland. Oh, my God. Snow White. It's got a mirror in it. Mm -hmm. Oh, it has an evil mirror in it. Yeah. Well, I guess the mirror The mirror is kind of neutral. Yeah. It's the Queen's Wicked, but the mirror is just kind of like, you know, well, I got to do what this crazy bitch in the castle says. You know what they should have done to sell this movie? They should have made carnival mirrors of mirrors. Ooh. <laughs> I love carnival mirrors. I want to bring them back. Like, do you know what I mean? Like they were a big thing for a while. And, and now where are they? Do you remember the episode of amazing stories called mirror mirror? No. Oh man. That was the one where, um, Sam Waterston was on it and he played a horror novelist like Stephen King. And he just was, he scoffed at actual supernatural manifestations and he was like, nothing scares me. So of course his life comes to a screeching halt because all of a sudden he starts seeing this creepy dude in every mirror that he looks in. 
Oh and man. The, the dude looks like uh the villain from House of Wax before we see that it's Vincent Price. Uh he's like dressed like this dude from House of Wax, and he keeps getting closer and closer to Sam Waterston every time he looks in a reflective surface. It's oh pretty man. Half hour drama. Man, there's also the movie Mirrors with Kiefer Sutherland. I forgot all about that one. Yes. So there's that. And uh, uh it's not well, the original guy that has a mirror scene too, Bill. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And us could us be a mirror movie? Wait, what? Us? Yeah. Wait. Oh, 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 us. God, yeah. I didn't know what you meant for yeah. a minute. Yeah, I guess it yeah, totally. Yeah. Although it really only has one mirror moment. Yeah. To, to be honest. There there's a creepy funhouse mirror moment, but yeah. I don't know. You yeah. be the judge. I won't. I won't go there. I will not name us a mirror movie. Okay. By carnival <laughs> mirrors, I was referring to the little mirrors that you would win from throwing darts. I don't know what the other name for this. Coke mirrors or whatever you would call those. Uh, those are what I was. Coke mirrors? <laughs> yeah. I had, a, uh, in there? I had a Van Halen one when I was young. I had Pac-Man. Oh, man. Up until recently, I had a bunch of carnival mirrors with Pac-Man on them. I gave them to a friend of mine, but you know, I, I see them all the time. There's this antique store we always stop at in, uh, in Potter County, PA. And there's a whole carnival mirror section, Sam, and you just look through all of these things. They're super expensive. Anything that's cool is at least like 30, 40 bucks. Mm. But you got all your Bon Jovi's, your Duran Duran's, your Michael Jackson thrillers. Journey Escape. In there. Yes. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> Iconic Journey Escape. Journey Escape was so big, they even had a video game. How crazy is that? Yeah. Man. Kiss. Yeah, there were Kiss mirrors, too. Just all that was a magical time, wasn't it? Walking up to that mirror game at the carnival. Oh. And you just knew you're like, I can hit three balloons for a dollar. It seems doable. And like a lot of the other games, like, you know what I mean? And it's like, yeah, cause those mirrors probably cost them 10 cents. So you were still the sucker even when you won, but I'd come yeah. home with like four or five new mirrors and I'd put them up. My dad be like, what are you doing? So why do you need that? And I said, you can't even look in it. It's got paint all over it. <laughs> they didn't have any of my favorite bands. My really favorite bands. There was no M mirror. Yeah. Okay. There was no uh, Thompson Twins Thompson mirror. Twins mirror. There was no human sexual response mirror <laughs> at the carnival. There was no uh, dead or dead or alive mirror. No dead or alive. Uh, I'm looking up online to see if there's a Thompson Twins mirror right now um, on uh, eBay. There is not. Wow. No, there is. I'd not. be surprised because that had kind of like you know gone out of fashion yeah there is a uh a couple pins and a rectangular patch that's all that's up i bet i have it it's just it just says thompson twins right it had their little uh heads on it too oh oh god the imprint the iconic imprint yeah i had a t-shirt that i made in art class with that on it and everyone will oh. always see it and say is that a map of the world oh <laughs> man yeah, well, I was always, I guess, I had a couple Iron Maiden ones, probably. I think Iron Maiden was big enough oh, yeah. in the mirror. Yeah. Oh, God, Iron Maiden. Like, how could you, how could there not be a hundred Iron Maiden mirrors? Everything they do is, like, perfect for mirror design. Oh, they're right They're right in the mirror stuff. Every Eddie. Oh, so many Eddies. Paul, the movie we watched with the broken mirror was uh, Mirror, Mirror, we watched. Uh, so that's the first of the mirror movies we watched on here. Um, I love that movie. Oh, Daryl said he got a Gary Newman car refreshner, car freshener <gasps> at a show. Wow. Who knew? That's amazing. I mean, was there, is it vintage? I, I would, I'm guessing not. Yeah. I always, well, yeah, I, I agree with Steve. There's, you always saw Floyd, Led Zepp and ACDC, a lot of ACDC mm -hmm. mirrors. You know, you have to like the biggies are going to be the ones everybody usually wants. A Michael Jackson mirror. Yeah. Maybe some wrestling mirrors too. I had a, uh, I had a couple wrestling posters I want at the carnival. Uh, and they had like wood frames on them. They would put like these like rustic wood frames 
on posters. I have no idea why, and you'd win those sometimes. I love all these creepy mirror scenarios people are coming up with for movies, like the um, the poltergeist mirror scene. Yeah. Man, a lot of good mirror content tonight. Uh, I love the Boogie Nights mirror scene. Oh, yeah. That's uh, that's got K and B special effects too. They built the uh, the prosthetic for it, supposedly. Oh, you're talking about his dong. Yeah, that mirror. I was scene talking was. about all the coke they did on the mirrors. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> there were there were many mirror scenes in Boogie Nights. Beth has a BG's mirror, and Lyle Junior made a Pink Floyd mirror. So there are Ooh. some mirrors going on here. Man, I like a DIY mirror. Yeah. That sounds interesting. Do you have a picture of it, Lyle? You should share it. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Hello, everybody. We got a ton of people in the chat. I saw Joe Rudes in there. I yeah. uh, see a lot of other folks in there. So welcome to the show. Um, talking about mirrors, mostly yeah. carnival mirrors and mirror movies, but that's okay. Um, we can talk about whatever. It's our show. I love this uh this artwork that's around us this is like if you had 3d glasses on i would be receding and bill would be coming forward to attack. try it it's fun it's trippy yeah the show is in 3d tonight yeah for we're mirrors high, in our... class. We're, we're high class we're even on an imdb sam i know that's okay. i was amazed it was already on imdb uh <laughs> that we did the show if you can check out bill's a maniac he's on imdb a lot um <laughs> You can also, uh, we'll also be watching the girl in room 2A later, which uh, is when the kids go to bed. We could only show it late for the second movie. We were told by our sponsors that we don't have sponsors, but <laughs> we do have sponsors. Tonight's oh, sponsors were Frank ooh. Paulvino and Tim Dorch. Oh, Frank told me to play it second. That's That's right. Thanks, Frank. If you it would like to sponsor an, an episode of the Drive-In Asylum double feature, you can make a donation to us via PayPal. The email address is groovydoom at gmail.com. And even if you we're not asking for a lot of money, you know, if you want to send $2, $3, $5, yeah. or as much as you want to, uh, you'll get your name in the credits on the show. How cool is that, huh? If you sponsor. pay us over $1,000, we'll come and move into your house. For at least a week. We should have some crazy Patreon thing that we do where <laughs> Yeah. We'll be, we'll, it's like it's so like much pink, like the pink houses contest on MTV where they bought you a pink house. <laughs> it would have to be like uh, you know, totally so much money that nobody would ever do it. Yeah. Because <laughs> I wouldn't want to commit. No. I've done that before though on freelance jobs where I don't want to do them. And I'm like, it's gonna be this much an hour. And I'm like, man, I'm so glad I didn't want to do that job. And then they call you back a couple days later and like, we'll do it. And I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> I think for us, so much money that they wouldn't do it would be like $25. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It'd be like $13. We'll do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Andrew asked, how much for a barbed wire bat to the back? Will I be getting hit with it or will I be delivering it? The price is different. I've done it for five bucks before, though. So, I mean, you know... <laughs> Yeah, Becca said she'll send me to live with you for free. She's she's done. Well, in the midst, a couple weeks ago when I was uh, going through some of my nervous crisis, she said, I'm going to send you to live somewhere else. And I was like, oh, with your mom. And I was like, okay, I'll be here. So, uh, <laughs> That's mean. Yeah. I know. Becca. I know. She loves me. Um, I know she doesn't if you, mean it. If you think our second movie is scuzzy tonight, spoiler, next week's movies are even scuzzier. We went all oh, scuzzy next week. Totally. Yeah, we're already yeah. teasing next week's show because it's so dirty. Yeah. It's it's so dirty, you're going to have to wear a raincoat. You're going to be a raincoater for it. Wow, uh, Chris said that we can build him a Pittsburgh pool, an above-ground pool because he's rich. Look out. <laughs> That's what we're really doing with your donations. They're going to yeah. go to our, towards our fabulous uh, deck with a pool right beside yeah. it. And the yeah, so we come back, you come back for a show and Bill and I are both wearing suits and not just like stuff like the management. Uh, we'll be wearing like real like like fancy suits like when Kiss used to wear suits when they took their makeup off. 
Oh God. Remember what a, what a life changing moment that was when oh. kiss took the makeup off. Oh my gosh. Hey, they had a whole special on MTV. I didn't remember it, that. Yeah. The unmasked thing. It was like an hour long thing. And at the end, they all came out without their masks, without their kabuki makeup. I just remember the cover of Unmasked, that oh. comic book thing about oh, yeah. Kiss being stalked. Oh. I loved it. You know what's the greatest thing I was thinking today? Because I was wearing, you'll see in the video later, I had a Kiss shirt on. I was like, Kiss put out four solo albums, They're like the height of their career, and they just all had their own records. Like, that's wild. Like, how many bands do that? Professor of Rock just had that on today, I think. Oh, yeah? You ever watch oh, Professor of Rock on YouTube? Yeah, yeah. Coming up, we got the best band in the world when they took their makeup off and they went in public. <laughs> I don't even know that he said that, but it's it's all about Ace Freely, I think, about how they said his solo album was going to suck and then it was fabulous. Yeah, there's New York Groove on it. It's the best, mm -hmm. the best one. I like jeans too, but jeans is going to be probably the one I'm I going to like anyway. I like jeans better too. Do you? I like <laughs> I like Gene as a concept, as the demon concept the most, but Gene yeah. the person I like the least. Yeah. Does that make sense? He's despicable. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely despicable. And I don't think it's an act either. No. No, I don't either. I, I like uh I probably like Paul Stanley the most of like from a personal level because he'll yeah he posts recipes on his uh Instagram and I love it. He did one for Brussels sprouts one time where he was like you got to burn the Brussels sprouts when you make them and they taste so much better and i was like wow <laughs> i love paul the best uh, i would be really disappointed if i had you know evidence that paul was a dick like gene yeah i'm yeah. sure he is but i don't want to know please don't anyone tell me anything bad about paul stanley no you don't want to hear anything bad about him oh it's it's crushing when you find out something about one of your rock heroes where you're like really yeah yeah it's i don't like it please who, nobody who, say who were you disappointed by like who who did you find out was an asshole and you and you didn't like it oh i don't know i think i kind of i'm not upset that danzig's an asshole i kind of want him to be an asshole so i'm fine with it yeah who you know cares because I mean? he's like five <laughs> two and like from new jersey and he's like yeah you know what i mean of course he's ill-tempered I mean, I don't think anybody would be disappointed that he was an asshole. He's, he's still an asshole. Yeah. But, you know, does it really matter? No, I don't know. I'm trying to think who... Nobody's really destroyed. It's sad, but like I think as I've gotten older, I've kind of got over it. You know what I mean? I, you all, you know, you just don't care anymore. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Andrew said that Kane Hodder was an asshole. Dusty Rhodes was an asshole. Someone said oh, no. no. Stuart Copeland is an asshole. Stu oh. Really? Yeah. One of the police? Yeah. An asshole? A bigger asshole than Sting? How is this possible? <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if Sting really wasn't an asshole and Stuart Copeland was the big asshole? Yeah. If Stuart Copeland was like putting out the word. The, I mean, he's like, Sting's <laughs> like, I'm just such a nice person. I never said I could have <laughs> yeah, love for six hours. That, so be like, oh, that's how this an act. Do you want to come party on the bus? <laughs> we yeah. have some great pate. Yeah. My favorite Danzig's an asshole thing is like if you get him, if you say, hey, you know, you ripped off your skull from Chris Star number nine and Mike Golden drew it, he'll be like, no, he didn't. He only drew half that skull. I drew the other half. And you're like, but it's the same skull. These are the things I love. But he's made two reasonably insane movies. So I'm super excited that he's going to keep making them. Because, uh, man, Death Rider uh, in the House of Vampires is something special. There's whole big chunks that are missing audio. Um, and that's what I want out of movies. I'm jumping ahead and making a cocktail oh, right yeah. in front of everybody. It's not time There's for the Malibu. drinks. Yeah. You know who's nice? Courtney Love is great. Uh, she's the best. <laughs> she isn't. <laughs> no. I don't believe you. No, I know. Do you really think that? Um, I mean, she killed Kurt Cobain, so she's not all bad. <laughs> So. <laughs> you wanted her to die. <laughs> yeah. Hot take. Hot takes. I like the Pixies. They already did what Nirvana did. So I'm there. Yeah. 
Do you want to bang heads with me? That's what Danzig says. Do you want to feel ever thin? There you go. Debbie Boone is an asshole, Jeff Gordon said. Oh, I believe that. Yeah. Anyone John related to Pat ass- Boone has to be an asshole. Mm. Mm. Joe said George Clinton was a bit of a grouch. Do you mean George Clinton or George S. Clinton, who did the canon soundtracks? Because I hope it's not George S. Clinton. I don't want to. I don't want to be let down. Don't bring me down, Bruce. John Carpenter being an asshole. Sorry, I was a little late with the chat there. Uh, everybody hears that about John Carpenter. Oh, you want him to be, don't you? I yeah, I don't care. Like it, yeah. once again, like I don't care if John Carpenter is an asshole. If he told me to go fuck myself, you know, like I'd be like, oh, yeah. okay, John Carpenter. <laughs> Who cares? I think Steve he's just he's annoyed by people. That, Steve said he's disappointed. David Lee Roth is a cranky old bastard. I love David Lee Roth, and he can do whatever he wants. And I don't like anybody that is associated post Van Halen uh, outside of David Lee Roth. So not every a, artist is like uh, is a nice person and not everybody is prepared for the the other side of what comes with being famous and not that I would yeah. ever know this but you know from having I heard a lot of people talk about this doesn't it seem like people who are famous they're most annoyed by the fact that they've done this one thing that everybody remembers and that's what yeah. everyone wants to talk to them about for the rest of their life and they're like you know this is and you probably get sick of that after a while like after 5,000 people have asked you questions about Halloween. Like, remember that part in Halloween when Michael Myers sat up again? Oh, my God. That was so scary. Like, you would get sick of people saying that to you 10,000 times. Maybe I, I, that's why he's a dick. I do like that Jay in the chat also said, uh, uh, brought up Kitty Wynn, because uh, she is in the movie tonight. Thank you for doing that. Yeah, um, thanks for getting us back uh, on track. Yeah. I will say this is my uh, on celebrities. I think a lot of times when people meet them, they're getting like a two or three minute window into them. And it's like, you know, especially at a convention, like they've been around people all day or they're stressed and their travel has been bad. Like you're only meeting them for this, like, like drop in a bucket of their life. And, um, and then it's like, you're getting like, well, they were an asshole. Like, no, you had a somewhat bad experience with them. So, you know, Oh, you know who I'm really disappointed about being a total asshole? Marilyn Manson. Mm. I fucking love that guy. And mm-hmm. I like, you know, I know he's probably, I don't mean like the fact that he was challenging, of course, because, you know, or that he was completely brilliant at manipulating the media and presenting a, pers- a persona. I think that's what he's really good at it, even aside from his music. You know, that was that was a really special thing when he became... Uh, a celebrity really and yeah. I thought it was so interesting and I thought he was saying things that people didn't usually say like he had a total like you know blasphemous way of, of doing but he made it and people were doing blasphemy way longer before him somehow he brought that to the mainstream media and I thought that was brilliant and mm-hmm. now he turns out to be a fucking you know douchebag predator uh, yeah, not a predator from space. Predator, but that would be predator. cool if he was. Yeah, that'd be way cooler, a, right? a predator from space. Yeah. the other kind, the all too familiar kind. Oh, those predators. Well, we're. I'm hearing good things about people. Let's concentrate on the good. People. Vincent Price, very nice. Someone said John Waters is nice. Beth's bringing the positivity tonight, and we appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, mirrors with with Keenan Wynn. That's tonight's movie, Paul. Yeah, yeah. Sean's trying to gently get us back. Hey, how about that first movie? So, uh, yeah, <laughs> let's talk about it. Hey, it's yeah. a voodoo movie, uh, and it, uh, as we said, it was made in between seventy four and seventy five. Maybe it came out in seventy eight. Maybe not. Uh, we're not a hundred percent sure. And Bill could not find any ads for it, which is pretty wild. I thought there'd at least be one screening that I could locate, especially because, you know, somebody put it on IMDb. I can't figure out where the hell Mirrors played first. So, whatever. Yeah. It was it, also written trust by... Trust us, Sid- it's a real movie. <laughs> What's wild is it was written by uh, also written by Sidney L. Stebble, 
who was one of the uh, script and continuity people for Picnic at Hanging Rock, which is a, a pretty big movie. Um, and, uh, you know, it feels like this movie had some talent behind it. Um, but, yeah, just never, uh, never really got anywhere. So that's why I'm excited about it, why I picked it this week. Because, I mean, I've heard about it, and I'm like, you know. And also, it's the first of the Windows trilogy, as we talked about. So, uh, of course. Of course. Um, so, yeah. Sorry, I just realized I didn't post the link, so I have to go do that. Yeah. Hello, yeah, I am there? here. I was just reading through the chat. Joe Zesso says hi oh, okay. from the subway. He says he hopes that we have a great show. Thank you so much. Um, doing some little bit of research on this movie. This is kind of, uh, I guess it's. I'm looking through some of the stuff. It feels. Uh, it says a lot of people feel that it is a unwanted child of Rosemary's Baby and The Exorcist. That makes a lot of sense. Um, there are m weird visions, including mirrors and a strange hotel manager and everybody in the hotel has a voodoo cult. There is also a husband with asthma, which is kind of strange. Um, but from what I've read from several sites, the script is not good. When has that ever stopped us from liking a movie? I tell you. That means you're going to be in our top 10 if you have a yeah. bad script. Yeah. Also, this story has similar themes with let's scare Jessica to death. Uh, someone said, but the ending is too ambiguous. Don't tease us with, the, with this description of the movie. An ambiguous ending. What are we doing? This could be our long lost favorite movie. You know that? This could be our next Black Room. You never know. Someone gave it a four out of 10. I mean, come on. That's four out of 10 is, is right. That's what I and the, I call the sweet spot. Yeah. Uh, you know? Definitely. Yeah. My spot is sweet there. Yeah. It nothing really happens and Kitty wins in it. Okay. Kitty wins. Yeah. 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 It's a big idea to get used to. Yeah. She quit acting after this. It wasn't many it wasn't many years after this that, that she quit. Oh, um, really? Well, also, don't forget this was made in 74. Yeah. So it didn't come out until 78, even though th this was something she did right after The Exorcist, I believe. Oh. Trying to strike while the iron was hot, they made this movie, and then I guess nobody wanted to release it. Huh. I don't know why. Kitty Wynn is still alive. She is 81 years old. And she uh, did some acting on TV. She Her last roles are in 1984. She was on the show Partners in Crime and Jesse, and she was in the Tragedy of King Lear. Uh, and that's pretty much it. She did two episodes of Kojak in 77. Uh, the Last Hurrah, a TV movie in 77. And, of course, Exorcist 2, The Heretic, which we've already showed. She quit acting to raise a family. Ah. Well, that's nice. I think that's a, it, that's a good thing. And maybe she got sick of people asking her about The Exorcist. You think? So she said, you know what? I'm going to go into hiding and be anonymous for the rest of my life. Aww. Please don't ask me about being Kitty Wynn and living in a fabulous part apartment in New York with Reagan <laughs> while her mother was off making $50 million in 1977 dollars for being in a movie to afford this place. Well, her mom also had to afford, we talked about it before, but that enormous medical bill too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's just, do oh. you think her kid, she's like, I don't want my kids hearing about demons. I don't want my kids hearing about the exorcist. I'm trying to raise a family. It's just a movie. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Oh. David said, she seems like the kind of actress who would have gone to Italy to start exorcist ripoffs in his dreams. If only, huh? Oh, she really should have. Yeah. I'm sure she got offers. Yeah. Do you think, oh, think I, they I had to she, have called Kitty Wynn? And, <laughs> yeah. Someone had a call. Luigi and Kazi reached out to her. Yeah. We want to put you in a movie. Uh, they go in the child's bedroom, and there is a can of Campbell's soup on the wall. It is a 
a joke. <laughs> <laughs> she said, I'm not doing beyond the door. Beyond in this movie, you don't have to clean the carpet. You you, you just uh when the girl pees, you just you just let it go. <laughs> That wasn't even Kitty when they cleaned the carpet. It was the old lady, maybe. I know. Beth said, Beth said it. I was just taking her joke. So. Uh, I think this is what's sad in the world. There's no more rip-offs of movies when a big movie comes out. You know what I mean? Outside of like the Asylum and some of those streaming ones, there's not Italian rip-offs of it. How good would it be if we had some really cheap versions of movies? You know what I mean? Like an Italian version of us, that would be great. I would be all over that. Yeah, um, it's really scary to do that kind of thing these days with copyright laws being so draconian now. Yeah. And also, um, in the 70s, it was easier to get away with that kind of thing because we didn't really have... The world wasn't quite as small then with yeah. communication and the internet and everything. I guess maybe people felt emboldened by that. And now no, everybody's afraid of being sued. So, I don't know. I, I, I would uh, I would love to see that kind of shit nowadays. But where would it? Who would? Who would distribute it? You know, yeah. where would this? Where would these movies come out? Where would they play? A little the thing whole called culture is gone. Tubi. <laughs> uh, Mike's got a great fact though that Mirrors has a score by Stephen Lawrence, who also did Alice, Sweet Alice, and they're virtually identical. So there you go. And a Her Henry Manfredi. The children kind of way again everything i hear about this movie is making me love it um it, there's no way it can live up to what i want it to be but damn it if i'm not going to try i'm Becca happy suggests an italian that. halloween too that movie is called uh absurd <laughs> it's the, yeah yeah <laughs> they, they made that already yeah with george eastman who also i i saw chris bring up in the chat yeah, and set, oh, it's never a show until we bring up George Eastman. It's set now. I need like the duck from You Bet Your Life to come down, or like the secret word from Pee Wee. Like, did Sam mention George Eastman? Yes. Okay, good. I honestly believe that just a little bit of Eastman is enough to change you oh, forever. It is. Hey, it looks like it's time for a drink. Yeah, let's do the mirrors cocktail, shall we? Shall we? What movie are we watching tonight? Mirrors. Cubby, what do you think about it? What do you see when you look into the mirror? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, welcome to the drink recipe for movie one. This is for the movie Mirrors, which is about voodoo. So tonight's drink is called voodoo. I'm going to fall over my dog through some voodoo. Anyway, it's uh, got a lot of booze in it. Probably a good thing. One ounce of balls, blue curacao. One ounce of 99 bananas, one ounce of Midori, ounce and a half of Malibu. We killed this Malibu bottle off. A little jazzy version of Taps. No. Oh, and finally, for the health conscious, three ounces of orange juice. Pretty simple. What we're going to do is we're going to mix it into a shaker. All I have to say is it's another green drink. It's another green drink. <laughs> Shake it up in the shaker. Put it over crushed ice. Put it all together. Here's the alcohol. Very pretty, very medicine-y for a voodoo drink. NyQuil. <laughs> it probably is the same thing. Does NyQuil taste like the tropics? No, this drink is better than NyQuil. Seal it, make sure it's nice and shake it up. Take the top off. It's a different green than we usually have. It's a minty green, is what that is. Well, it looks like Troll too. It does. No Bob Voodoo. Anyways, get ready for some mirrors. Cubby's ready. I'm ready. Oh my gosh, this is tropical. Mmm. Pazuzu. 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 And I did not make the green cocktail. I poured some rum and Coke into this glass, and now I'm going to drink it. That's totally fine. It is very good. And Becca said it tastes like bubble gum. So if anybody made it, it has a bubble gummy taste, which is good. 
Bill, I did not bring it up, but very exciting. You were on a podcast this week. That's right. Uh, it posted yesterday. It's the Making Tarantino, the podcast, hosted by Philip Duke. And it was really fun. We talked about Mausoleum, Sam. I know. I'm very excited to listen to this episode. <laughs> One of my favorite movies where a woman can turn into a dem demonic creature and then just a few hours later after she's murdered a pizza boy, she's sitting in front of her fireplace in an evening gown and heels, perfect hair, perfect makeup, and she tells her husband that they're having poached salmon for dinner. Come on. <laughs> that that's that it's like an the unbridled uh male fantasy called mausoleum. Yep. And it's apparently uh it's on Tarantino's list of movies that he recommends. We couldn't really figure out why mm. other than he just thought it was, you know, as absurd as we did. But uh, regardless of what Quentin or anyone else thinks about it, I love it. And you, you know, that's one of my favorite films. Oh yeah. I, I do love it. And yes, uh, uh, I saw someone ask, David asked, is absurd been on the show? It has been. Yes. So, yeah, we did that one. Yeah. And uh, Thomas says, Muslim shows why you should never wish for a woman with a monster rack. Yeah. Yes. The monster rack is highly overrated, as Marjo Gortner found out the hard way. The, yes. He sure did. We talked a lot about Marjo Gortner on, on the show, actually. Oh, really? Oh, and I'm excited to how listen. How awesome he is. Yeah. I'm a big fan. So, yeah. Well, That's Philip awesome. went and watched the movie Marjo. Oh, awesome. So we were talking about that a little bit, which which is a, an amazing movie. If you haven't seen it, go seek it out. Marjo from 1972. It's all about Marjo Gortner's uh, past life as a child preacher. And he was preaching from the age of five, I think, mm -hmm. until he was 14 or 15. So, um, you know, it's it's really strange and weird and fantastic. Seek it's it amazing out. how much... Uh the cameras caught in that especially mm -hmm. like the scenes where people are just pouring out buckets of money after one of the tent revivals and there's just that it's hotel. genius yeah it's absolutely genius because if marjo gortner had said i want to make a documentary about how corrupt the church <laughs> is like nobody would ever bankroll that but instead he's like hey i'm going to go back and make a documentary about my uh, revival preaching career and i'm going to bring these young hippie filmmakers with me and we're going to smoke pot in a hotel room. There's that, that scene was... in the beginning where there's a girl with the hippies and they're like, she's like, I'd never buy any of that stuff. And then he like says like two or three things to her. And she's like, wow. He goes, I just did it to you. Like I did. That's exactly what I do on stage. And she's like, wow. Like it's, it's so amazing. It's, uh, it's one of my favorite movies. I definitely recommend anyone. Watching he really it. was the Matthew McConaughey of his time. Yeah. As Laura pointed out. Yeah, he was. Maybe he didn't get to be in as high budget of movies, but a couple. He was in a few, but, uh, you know, he's in a lot of movies that we like, and that's what's really important. We're going to be seeing him on the drive-in screen pretty soon, Sam. We sure are. Right next to another one of your faves, Caroline Monroe. I know, Star Crash. Uh, one of my favorite movies. The first, probably one of the first Italian exploitation movies I ever saw. I saw it at the drive-in with Battle Beyond the Stars at the Spotlight 88 when I was a kid. What a double feature. A near perfect mm -hmm. double feature. You know what? I think we've never talked on the show yet about our upcoming appearance, personal appearance that we're going to make. Oh, we should then. Well, we don't have any specific details yet, but what we can tell you is that sometime in the near future, Sam and I are going to be making an appearance at Facets in Chicago. Yeah. We're going to be co-hosting one of John McDevitt's um, super horror rama nights there at Facets. It's always a double feature. It's going to be a totally Sam and Bill double feature at Facets in Chicago. Yeah. We're going to be there live in the flesh too. So you can come uh, meet us, talk to us, throw tomatoes at us, whatever you want to do. Yeah. yeah. We're That's very gonna, excited. And this summer, probably uh, towards the end of the summer, we will keep you posted here. We're available for parties too. So if you want us to come, as we said, we're cheap. We'll come to your house and we'll watch a movie with you. 
Cubby will not be there. Cubby is not a traveler. Uh, he would. He, he's going to his uncle's house. I was just informed. Um, but yeah, he Cubby is not a world traveler. Uh, so yeah, but we're very excited. Um, he'll be there in spirit. Tim Torch, thank you for joining us. We mentioned you as one of our sponsors in the evening. So thanks very much, Sam, Tim. Now that you're finally joining us. David is coming in Prophecy Bear cosplay, which is a, a very appropriate, I think. We're hoping to see that. Yeah. We're I'm not revealing to... what I'm going to wear, yeah. but it might look something like I have on right now, probably. Yeah. Becca asked me, she said, are you going to dress up? And I said, well, no, I'm going to dress just like I always dress on the show. She said, well, I'm going to buy a new outfit. And I, yeah, as an excuse for her to buy a new outfit, she said, I have to really show up and, and really be dressed to the nines. And I was like, okay, well, I said, I'm going to probably wear a uh, American International picture shirt or something like that. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> as it should be. Yeah. Laura said her one-year anniversary of being a Driving Asylum fan is Monday, so congratulations. Oh, right on. That's congratulations, Laura. Thank you for hanging with us. Yeah. You know what else, too? Today is Bradley Steel Harding's birthday. I was going to say that. I just realized that because I was looking up birthdays just now on uh, the only place I discover birthdays, which is uh, Facebook. Which Isn't that the reason to still have it? Yeah. It keeps me on track with birthdays. I, I even still miss them sometimes because I don't look at that part of Facebook enough. Yeah. But yeah. Um, happy birthday, Bradley. And to you, if it's your birthday or if it was your birthday this weekend, we missed it. So, yeah. uh, you know, Bradley posted something really interesting. He works for Heritage Auctions. And yes. today they sold the piece of door that Rose and Jack were floating on in Titanic. I saw yeah. that. That's crazy. It was for an obscene amount of money, too. Oh, he said that he said that the auction isn't even over yet. And they've like really gone past their goals, which is which is pretty wild. Hey, good for them. Yeah. What is a piece of a movie that you wish you owned? Well, I don't necessarily know that I want to own it, but I remember when that uh, little footbridge from Monroeville Mall that was in Dawn of the Dead mm. uh, was going to be torn down. And there was sort of like a last minute push to save it online. And yeah. it was unsuccessful. Um, I really miss that thing. I don't know. Like, I, I feel so bad that that's gone. And also when we went to the, I went to the Monroeville Mall with a couple of different people, Roger Braden, um, when Joe Rude and Alex Lopez from Ghoul Incorporated Productions came to Pittsburgh. We went there and we were looking for the elevator where Flyboy gets cornered by the zombies. And because I, I mean, I had been in that elevator for real so many times and I just took it for granted that it would always be there. And of course it wasn't. I wish that elevator was still there. I wish we could still go there and experience yeah. those things the same way. So I don't know that I want to own any of that stuff. But I still be able to, uh, to, to experience it. Yeah. It's fair. As long as they don't what take out that pic the picture of Argento and Minerva Mall. As long as I can still look at that every time I go. What about you? Oh what man, that's like a great own? question. I don't know. <laughs> well, you asked it. I know. <laughs> it's coming I know. back at you. I know. Uh, I'd like to own the motorcycle from Nightmare City, or not Nightmare City, oh. Nightmare Beach, the one that has the uh, electric chair on the back of it. That would be pretty awesome. I would like to own car? Sean Connery's cod piece from Zardoz too. Sean said yes. <laughs> I want the car. Oh. I just saw somebody oh. posted about that on Facebook. You know, there's some, I, there's at least two people out there, I think, that own the car. Wow. Uh, maybe just one, because I think only one survived. They made three of them, and they wrecked two of them during the making of the movie. When one survived, I would love to own yeah. the car, or at least I'd the love to own if they had made the car board game to own one of those. Like, how great would that have been to own the car board game that never came out? 
Wait, what cardboard game? The car. The car game that Kenner showed at Toy Fair oh. and didn't release. Yeah. It looked like Jaws to me. It was yeah. all they were all Jaws, the shark thing, except with a different mechanism. Yeah, exactly. David said he would kill for the puzzle from pieces or Hangina's hideous turquoise necklace from Poltergeist 3. Wow. Bill actually has. I bought Bill the puzzle from pieces for uh for his birthday. Well, I think your birthday or Christmas. I bought it for you once. I still have it. And uh Sean would like the Hemikuda from uh Phantasm. Man. Tim. Yeah. Um that's a that's a beautiful car. Yeah. So yeah, Tim and uh, a lot of people Paul wants Frankenstein's car from Death Race 2000. Yes. Joan Love Crawford's that. hideous necklace from I saw what you did. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, uh, it's like a fucking like um a warrior outfit or some, some kind of like armor that she wears over her decolletage. Uh, it's amazing. Oh man. Now I'm gonna go back and watch it, and it'll be all that I see for the whole movie. <laughs> How could you miss wait. it? Uh, she must have been self-conscious about her neck and her chest or something. So she had oh, this so like she, so you just didn't see it. It was like subterfuge. You know, because she told William Castle that you know they were going to make her character in Straight Jacket be in her 60s. And Joan was like, no, she's in her 40s. <laughs> like she always played women who were way younger than she really was. That's, you know what, when you're a big enough star, that's the kind of stuff you can do. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying well, they should have done whatever the fuck she wanted. But, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm just saying, like, she could have owned it. She could have been like, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm still hot. I heard she was really nice to everybody, though. I heard she was super nice. So she was like as mean as she has a reputation of being to her kids. You know, I'm not saying she wasn't fucking nuts, but she was nice to people. Like she, she knew everybody's name on the set, like all the way down to the grips, and like she would come in early in the morning and make breakfast for the crew. (laughs) Who does that, Joan? Oh, nobody would do that now. No. They wouldn't. Man. So uh anybody is anybody in the chat seen this seen mirrors? I'm excited. It, who has seen it instead of who hasn't seen it? We don't have any answer. So let, let's see it before we get to the movie. Yeah, I think we asked earlier and no one I, I if someone said they'd seen it, I missed it. Um oh, okay. It's pretty uh obscure to yeah. say the least. And <clears throat> like I said, I couldn't find evidence of it playing anywhere, but uh, someone thinks it did. So, you yeah. know, let us know if you, if you know anything about the theatrical exhibit exhibition of the Kitty Wynn epic mirrors. Mike has skimmed it a few times. Vince has a bootleg of it. Uh, so there are a couple people that have seen it. We have a pretty, uh, pretty thoughtful chat room. That know things a lot of people though are first timers so and uh daryl loved the house that vanished by the way bill just so you know and i did too i was thinking about it a yeah. couple times this week we talked about it the other day like did it vanish or were people just the dumbest people uh think the dumbest people uh, was i think answer. that is it that, that has to be yeah. the answer and the thing that's confusing us is the title that somebody else came up with for it yeah. You know, the house that vanished. Maybe they, Jose Larraz didn't really intend for that to be the the focus of the title or the film. Yeah. They were like, how about the girl that was really dumb? And they're like, no, no one's going to go see that. Um, okay. The girl that couldn't find her way out of a paper bag. The girl with no sense of direction in the woods. No, that doesn't work either. Let's just call it the house that vanished. That sounds like there's something to that. That sounds interesting, you know? Ah, so since I don't have any ads to look at for mirrors before we go to the movie, we'll look at some things that I dug up for the groovy doom page. I don't think I've run any of these ads yet. I'm about to show you, but here we go. Uh, Kroger Bab, mom and dad, the story of life. Um, what would you say about this film, Sam? Do you have anything to say about mom and dad? I just had it on the site. Yeah. Yeah, it's you know what's crazy is no one is really sure how much money that movie made. 
because uh, Bab he had at least thirty or forty prints of it playing the U.S. at all times, and the doctor who's in the there's like a doctor who supposedly wrote the movie. His uh, common law wife wrote it, um, and uh, it's funny he when he made his first movie that he produced, um, Child Bride. She was a film reviewer in Indianapolis, and she said, this is the worst example of a movie I've ever seen. I can't believe it's playing in a theater. And he took her on it. He said, I want to meet you for dinner, and you can tell me how much you hated it. By the end of the date, they were in love, and uh, they were together for like 50 years after that. <laughs> that um, is a sweet story. Yeah. And uh, she wrote a lot of his other movies. She wrote the book that was sold, but <gasps> he estimated, he never really wanted to say because the IRS was after him for it, but he thinks that the book cost about a penny to print. He thinks he made $40 million in profit from the book, if not more. And that's in like 1948, 49 time uh, money. So you can only imagine how much that movie made. Mom and Dad's a really uh, strange movie because um, it's it was also an opportunity for people to see nudity, even though like a baby was being born during it. Um, which that was one of the selling points, depending on where it played in the country, it was sold as either controversial, educational, um, a warning, like, and he just kind of read the room when he played it and uh, took it out in four walled theaters. And he had literally rules of how it should be sold, how the advertising worked. And if anybody did anything different, he would uh, pull it from the theaters. It was like the Van, Van Halen Brown M&M's thing. Oh, yeah. He was not above one of the biggest tricks was if it wasn't doing well in a, in a town, supposedly he would put knockout <laughs> some kind of knockout gas into the air conditioning or like shut the air conditioning off and people would pass out. And then he'd always have some from a newspaper say, oh, well, people were so shocked they were passing out in the theater, uh, whatever, it, <laughs> whatever it took to sell, wow. uh, to sell his movies. Uh, you know, he was that sounds like that. something Wait, you could get sued for. Oh. Later in his life, he uh, had a fad diet called the Swedish ice cream diet, where uh, he claimed that you could use, lose up to 100 pounds from just eating ice cream and nothing else. Obviously, this wasn't as successful as mom and dad. Mom and dad was probably his biggest success. Boy, he was really, he, he was a sadist. Yeah. He was into playing with other people's lives. Yeah. This oh. is just for you, Sam. Teenage mother. Nine months of trouble. The She's film it does explain mother. what most parents can't. I know they can't explain how you should carry your books to school. They they couldn't no. explain what a book bag was. No, you just wrap a belt around it and take. I it. mean, uh, did people really do that? Come on, can someone explain this to me? Because Eddie Munster is doing it at the beginning of the Munsters. Yeah, teenage mother did it. It's two words too: teenage mother. Three words. Yeah. How could that yeah. be considered a, a safe way to carry your school books? Ugh. And she's pregnant too, so like she really can't strain her back too much or or anything. They should get her oh, something yeah. to carry. That movie is wild, by the way. Oh, I love this movie too, The Hook Generation. Tells it like it is, Bill. Like the weekly world news. Yeah, about the syndicate. And how they're taking the kids. <laughs> I watched yeah. Teenage Confidential today, so I'm very much into these teen movies about the pills and the dope and how you know they're getting kids hooked on smack. I know what's up. Laura and John said how this looks like Don Davenport. Yeah, totally. Oh. And I'm yeah. sure that was no accident on John yeah. Waters' part. Yeah. So Not do you want to get to the movie? Yeah, let's get into it uh it is on youtube uh and uh get ready to enjoy it and we know nothing about it and if it's not good we'll also hate it too so uh but i think we're gonna love it how about that i think we're gonna love it too and it's got kitty yeah. win in it how bad could it be yeah, you know she, she is an angel i mean she almost won an academy award for the exorcist yeah so we'll we shall see all right, I, I did post the link on Groovy Doom, by the way, to the movie on YouTube. But you could, if, if you're going to look it up on YouTube yourself, enter Mirrors 1978. 
Yeah. Even though it wasn't really made in 1978, just somebody out there thinks it came out in 78. I couldn't figure it out. Anyway, uh, go watch the movie and come back afterwards. We'll have lots more to say. Oh, my God.